All right, I'm Devin Harris. I'm a field security analyst here at GitLab, and today I'm with Anthony Saba. Uh, he's a senior threat intel engineer. Would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm Anthony. I'm a threat intel engineer here on the security team. Uh, I report up through strategic security. Um, I've been here uh, about a year and a half, um, helping uh, build up the teams and uh, generally um, uh, help where I can. Awesome. Well, thank you, Anthony. Um, as you know, we're trying to increase security awareness inside of GitLab here. Um, this is part of our series. Uh, so thank you for taking the time to meet with me today. I just have three simple questions for you. All um, right. First is in your own words, what would you describe uh, Threat Intel's job being? So Threat Intel's job is to work within uh, strategic security, uh, looking at trends in activities that we're seeing uh, that are affecting users on gitlab.com uh, to protect gitlab.com. And then uh, the other security department thing that we're protecting uh, is the company. So looking at things that are affecting team members um, as well in, in addition. Okay, good. Uh, and then, oh, and then uh, taking those uh, trends and making sure that um, our uh, initiatives are in line with reducing any risks associated with those. Okay, so really kind of the frontline defense there. Uh, I love it. Um, um, more, more of a strategic look at it. So um, now that we have a fully operational uh, SecOps team, teams uh, and application security teams, um, the threat intel role is more uh, looking at making sure things are getting collected um, as we do our day-to-day -day activities so that we can make those trends make good database decisions. Okay, thank you. That's awesome. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, can you describe a really cool project you've either recently finished or have um, been working on recently? Um, the current big push is to stand up a, a production environment for uh, security specific tooling that is more independent uh, than gitlab.com. We have a similar problem to support uh, and infrastructure in that you can't use gitlab.com to do support tasks of gitlab.com if gitlab.com is uh, unavailable or under attack. Um, so we're uh, looking at spinning that up um, and I'm uh, helping drive some of the requirements for that uh, so that six months, nine months from now, we can start hiring uh, SOC security operations center analysts uh, that have a set of tools um, that is predictable uh, to respond to events, respond to reports of phishing uh, of employees um, or anything else that's happening uh, and make sure that we are tracking and recording that and uh, being efficient about it as we, as we grow. That sounds like that's going to be very useful. Mm -hmm. um, and then lastly, uh, when, if ever, would somebody get in contact with your team and how would they do that? Uh, so, uh, again, as we've grown in the last year, um, people are still uh, pinging me directly for stuff. But now that we have uh, the operations team and you think something is going on, uh, always uh, be comfortable, you know, you need to be comfortable paging security uh, by uh, either in Slack, you can type in just slash security and then a message, um, or you can find them uh, in the security channel and tag uh, at SecOps team there. Um, if it's an MR review, or a design review of, of some new technology. Um, you can tag the AppSec team, uh, either in the issue or in Slack. Um, we do, you know, because we are responsible for uh, both self-managed um, and the production infrastructure, um, there are a lot of things that will span both the SecOps team, the application security team, and I'll get uh, pulled in uh, to do additional review um, as necessary for those as well. Awesome. I'll make sure to link those resources you mentioned uh, in the video when we're done. And I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me today. Absolutely. Thanks.